Valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Okay, with five and six negative charge centers. Starting off with phosphorus pentachloride. Phosphorus is in group five, so it has five valence electrons. And so I'd imagine that those uh, five chlorines will go around evenly spaced. Filling in the dots to make the Lewis structure for phosphorus pentachloride. So phosphorus is stable with 10 electrons around the outside, uh, which is unusual. Normally it's two or eight electrons. So to draw it out in 3D, three of the uh, bonds are in the plane, and one's going back, and that's represented by the dashed line, and one's coming forward out of the plane of the paper or the screen, and that's represented by a triangle. And this is called a trigonal-based bipyramidal structure, and it has two bond angles, a 90 there from the axis to the equator, and 120 around the equatorial chlorines. It sounds confusing, but uh, there's a little video at the end that should explain it even better. Okay, sulfur tetrafluoride. Sulfur's in group six, so I put six valence electrons around and put the fluorines in, all those little dots or electrons in pairs. So you can see that the sulfur has a lone pair. Lone pairs, according to VSEPR theory, are extra repulsive. And so when I draw it out, it gives it a kind of seesaw shape. The 180 degrees bond angle Now the lone pairs there, just to remind me that those bonds are kind of being forced down a little. Now the bond angles here are not the real ones, but they're good enough for IB. The real ones are slightly different. Okay, let's look at six charge centers. Sulfur hexafluoride. Well again, sulfur's in group six, so I'll put six electrons around the outside. And those six fluorines are probably gonna go there as well. Filling in those electron pairs. Lovely. So in three dimensions, the fluorines, uh, sorry, the, uh, the bonds are going to try and get as far away from each other as possible. And so that's going to come out to this structure here with four around the equator, evenly spaced, and two on the axis, one north and one south. And the bond angle there is 90 degrees. And so it kind of looks like a diamond shape, and we call that octahedral. Uh, PF6 minus is another octahedral one specifically mentioned in the syllabus. All right, then, the last molecule is the weird one, uh, xenon tetrafluoride. So xenon will react. Now, xenon's in group 8, and I'm going to do the line structure here instead of the dot and cross. So xenon is now stable with 12 electrons around its center, which, again, is unusual. Normally, we're expecting an 8 or 2, but this is higher level. And so to draw it out, We have to show the bonds going two back and two forward. It's 90 degrees because it's square planar. All right, let's uh, have a bit of fun. See how many zombies you can spot as well. All right, there. There's Dr. Atkinson, suitably impressed with uh, this molecular shape here. Well, that kind of looks like phosphorus penta fluoride or phosphorus pentachloride. Phosphorus in the middle, and you can see it's a, there's kind of two pyramids, one on top, one on bottom, trigonal based by a pyramidal. Okay, so that one had five charge centers. That's all, I think we've upset those zombies. Now this model here is not quite ready. I'm just gonna remove that top pumpkin. And it should be a seesaw now, there, it's a seesaw model. And you can see clearly the 180 and the 120. Oh. Zombie just threw part of the seesaw at me. I think it's time to run away. So that one could be uh, sulfur tetrafluoride. Okay, let's move on to six charge centers. Oh, watch out for that little head crab. Okay, so this is an octahedral, kind of a, a diamond-shaped molecule. In the middle is sulfur, and then there's six uh, fluorines, or chlorines, if you will, going around it. So all the bonds are as evenly spaced as they can. Oh, that in the middle there, I just moved the sulfur just to show you. Oh, the zombies don't seem to be chasing me, so I think we'll have a John Woo moment here as I burst through the pigeons. Oh, I'm Boba Fett. All right then, so this final one is square planar, xenon tetrafluoride. That's the xenon in the middle, and the pipes represent the bonds on the equatorial, and these are axial ones, well, those are the lone pairs. So square planar. All right. 
I'm going to go for a swim. Oh, more John Woo. Wee! Okay, a little review. See if you can name these shapes. Bond angles. It's pretty quick. So don't be afraid to press pause. <laughs> 